the hard times when they sell you on this game. They just talk about the girls and all that whiskey and the fame. But even if I'd known I'd have saddled up anyway. Something about this quest for gold lights a fire in your blood. And your soul won't rest till there's another notch carved in your gun. You'd best keep a sharp eye when you make a name. Cause there's always some new younger Jesse James. Just nod your head and say a prayer every time they crack the latch. Cause that number on your shirt is like a bullseye on your back Some days you don't clear leather Sometimes all you hits the ground No, it ain't easy trying to be the fastest gun in town Down the street side of this place called Rodeo Pass the lights and all the laughter You'll come across the bones Of all those broken dreams Scattered in the ditch Cause some of us just don't know how to quit We just nod our head and say Time they crack the latch Cause that number on your shirt Is like a bullseye on your back Some days you don't clear leather Sometimes all you hits the ground No, it ain't easy Trying to be the fastest gun The fastest gun in town Every drop of blood and sweat is worth it When I nod my head and say a prayer And that gate man cracks the latch And who I am is more than just a number on my back And I'll ride hell for leather Maybe someday Trying to be the fastest gun in town The fastest gun in town enjoyed that tune that's a great song check it out look up more of those videos always some good cowboy songs right there and with that we've got the man that made that happen chancy williams what is going on what are you up to no oh how you guys doing oh just up here in wyoming uh enjoying summer about to start so the weather's Way getting nice is it, wyoming is it cold when does the cold start well, the cold usually starts like in the fall. It could be September, October, and then it usually gets warm again right around now, like middle of May, first of June. Depends you on know, the year. I always look, like, right, yeah, I always look up. I would look up there. I'm like, man, it looks it looks nice. It looks like great country. And then I see videos of three foot snow feeding cows out of helicopters. I'm like, you know what? I don't think I want to go that far. Yeah, it ain't as bad as a helicopter, but you know, this, once you're used to living in the snow, we've grown up with it, it's nice, it keeps all the tourists out, so it toughens you up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that will. You know, with your, let's let's throw the, the viewers out there with your background. A lot, a lot of folks know, a lot of folks don't know, so 
you know, you, you rodeo and music. So how'd that come about? You know, what's your rodeo, what's your bo- rodeo background like as far as the Saddle Bronc Rider? Yeah, well, you know, uh, I grew up on a ranch up here in the northeast corner of Wyoming in a small town called Moorcroft. And uh, my folks have ranched there since 1985. And we run sheep and cows. And all growing up, me and my brothers rodeoed. You know, we started real young youth rodeos. You know, we're five and six years old going to those youth rodeos. And then that went on into, obviously, high school. Our team roped and uh, roped calves and rode saddle broncs all through high school. And then went to high school finals all my senior year in Springfield, Illinois. And then ended up getting a rodeo scholarship to Casper College. And, and so in college, I roped calves, team rope, and rode saddle broncs. But my main event was riding saddle broncs because I enjoyed that the most. So ended up going to college for rodeoing for four years at college rodeo and all made the college finals twice. And yeah, it was, it was a, a fun time, you know, rodeos, such a fun lifestyle. And it's a, the rodeo family is just a, the rodeo world is just a giant family. So everybody knows everybody. So met a lot of my longtime friends that I've had through rodeo. Yeah. And you got some good rodeo tunes. I mean, uh, you know, I was listening to, to a lot of your stuff and scrolling through some YouTube videos and things. I mean, you got, you got some good stuff, you know, good, good, country cowboy music you know up and down the road you know because a lot, a lot of folks who don't know that the rodeo you know you've been a long time on the road so you're always looking for something to listen to because you it, but people that don't understand what it's like to travel you hear the same 20 songs over and over for an hour yeah, that's you're the thing something. You're like, you're like well, what can i listen to i need some good music while i'm on the road and going i mean and you got some you got that you know you got some of that stuff and speaking of your rodeo and your music you are one of two that went out there road bronx in cheyenne like chris ledu did back in the day road bronx in cheyenne and concert and performed a concert in cheyenne too so what was that like yep it was me you know growing up in wyoming it's every young cowboy's dream to ride at cheyenne you know i mean cheyenne's the, the daddy of them all and me and my brothers always wanted to ride bucking horses there because my dad won Cheyenne in 1971. And then, uh, so he's had that Cheyenne buckle our whole lives. And our dream was always to, to ride there and try to win it. And, you know, uh, so we were, you know, able to ride there and it was, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, during that time I had a band started. So, you know, I never would have dreamed when I was riding there that several years later I'd be playing there just because I didn't know where music was going to take me. Cause back then, you know, all the, the main focus for both of me and my brother and my little brother was, was just rodeo. And I, I was just kind of doing music for a side thing for fun. But then a few years later, yeah, we got to play the main stage with, with Merle Haggard. And it was one of the coolest things ever. And it was, a uh, it was definitely a night I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life. And my dad, I, I never ended up winning Cheyenne. I ended up second there. So, uh, that night, I asked Dad, I was like, can I wear your Cheyenne buckle when I play Cheyenne on the main stage? It's pretty neat. Yeah, and that, that's one of those memories that, that uh, you know, they'll go with you forever. You know, you never forget, you know, that, that moment yeah. to be out there on on the big stage and do that. You know, we're, we're down here in Texas, and we listen to a lot, of, a lot of good country music here in Texas. And I don't know, being in Wyoming, if you know about the law here in Texas, but there's a law here in Texas if you play country music, you play good country, you've got to have a fiddle in the band. Only That's in Texas, right. you've got to have a fiddle in the band. And and you do. So can you tell us a little bit about, about your band, those that uh, that play with you? Yeah, you know, we, uh, as you guys know, you know, like the, the population of Wyoming ain't very big. It's We've we got about 600,000 people live here. So, like, trying to find great musicians that are willing to travel all the time has been difficult over the years. But we, I've been very fortunate, you know, with the group I got between me and my band and my crew guys, there's 10 of us and we're a giant family, but yeah, we, 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 uh, we hired a fiddle player. She had been about 10 years ago, uh, found a girl here in, in, in Casper, Wyoming that played and she came and audition has been with us every day since it's Brooke Lack. And she, uh, she, she plays the heck out of the fiddle and sings background vocals and, and looks real good. So she definitely is a, is a great piece to, to our band. Now, don't, don't forget your other guy. Now, everybody gets mad about the bass player. So you want to throw out who, who you got playing bass and who you got playing drums. <laughs> right. Who you got back there. Don't, don't, don't forget the background. I want to throw those guys out there, too. 
Oh yeah, well yeah, shoot, yeah. So like me and my drummer Travis, we started this band in high school, you know, just kind of for fun, and then played through college. So we've been together the whole time, and then oh, several years later, we met Wyatt Springsteen, our lead guitar player. He's from Saratoga, Wyoming, and uh, he fit right in. His his younger brother played with us at one point in time, and then uh, let's see, our bass player, his name's Jay Lee Downing. He's he lives in Loveland, Colorado. He's the first uh, first member I ever hired that wasn't from Wyoming. And then, uh, let's see, back there on the, we we have an auxiliary player we just hired um, back in, uh, not August or September, and he's actually the first guy from Texas we've ever hired. His name's Brett Hendricks. He's from Waco. So I I think I covered all the the band. Yeah. yeah. What's that? He wasn't from the, he wasn't a branch to Vidian, Vidian, was he? No. I don't think so. He he, uh, he he played on the road out there for oh several Texas guys. He was old oh, Casey Donahue for a while, and then ended up he he liked being in Wyoming. So we said, "Come on up, we'd love to have you." Now, as far as your your, your music and and what you play, what was your your musical influence? What what music did you listen to growing up that that kind of pushed you in the direction that you're in? Well, you know, I always tell people that, you know, growing up in Wyoming, playing guitar and rodeo, and everybody looked up to Chris Ledoux forever. I mean, he's the king of Wyoming, and so obviously Chris Ledoux, but, you know, grew up listening to a whole bunch of George Strait, because, I mean, there's not a lot of guys in uh, in country music that, that are actual cowboys. I mean, there's a lot of people that sing about the cowboy stories and the cowboy lifestyle, but there's there's only been a handful over the years that have actually – you know, set foot in the arena and done it at, you know, at a professional level. So obviously George Strait, the hell of a hand, team roper, Chris Ledoux, obviously world champion. So I've looked up to George and Chris my whole life, but you know, there's some other ones, Dan Seals, just some of them guys that used to sing great country music. Now you had a, you had a big release during, during the NFR, you know, back at the NFR. What was that like? Yeah, we uh, well, we've been really fortunate. You know, we've got to do the opening ceremony at the NFR the last four years in a row, and so, you know, growing up rodeoing, it's every cowboy's dream is to to, to nod your head um, out of them yellow bucking shoots in the Thomas and Mack Center. And you know, you know, my rodeo career was kind of getting toward the end, and I was starting to play music more, so I had to make a choice whether to play music or rodeo. So, chose music, but I knew. Right then, I'd probably never be able to ride at the NFR because I quit playing or quit 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 rodeoing. So, um, getting to getting to do the opening ceremony is is huge for a guy like me that you know knows everybody back there. Just getting on, you know, we're friends with most of the contestants, and it's just the the energy in the Thomas and Mack Center on those nights when it's sold out, eighteen thousand people. It's it means more to me than probably a lot of other artists because a lot of other you know people in country music might not understand rodeo quite like i do so it's it's a big deal for us we love the the national finals rodeo now you got an album coming out you got a new album coming out can you tell us a little bit about that yep got an album coming out uh friday may 22nd and uh it's my fifth album and uh yeah we're really excited about it we've been working on it for a couple of years you know uh trent wilman did my last album and this is the second one i got to do with trent so we've got spent uh, spend a lot more time together and you know he's obviously a texas boy that was very successful and writing as an artist and producing a lot of guys but we're, we're really excited about this trent and i wrote quite a few songs on there i wrote some with my friend jody stevens but there's a combination of a, you know like we always do put a lot of rodeo songs on there and stuff that our rodeo buddies would enjoy listening to going up and down the road and then there's also we, we put some different stuff on this. We put some a couple love songs on there that we don't really haven't really done a lot of love songs in the past. We mostly stick to you know wild party uh, rodeo type music, but we thought we'd do some songs for the for the girls on this one. So yeah, there's a, there's a touch of touch of everything on this. And, and we uh, Brooke and I, my uh, my fiddle player, we. We did a cover song on this one. We redid the old Dan Seals, Marie Osmond song called Meet Me in Montana, which we're real excited about. Oh, that's a that's a great that's a great song right there. Yeah, and I listened to it all growing up, you know, and I think it was released in nineteen eighty two. 
and nobody ever really redone it. And I was telling Trent when we were down there, when I was writing with him, I was like, you know, we should, we should do that. We should redo that song. And it was, uh, it turned out really well. I'm, I'm really happy the way it turned out. Now, are you, are you a big, uh, are you a big griller? Are you, are you a big fan of cooking out and, uh, hanging out at the grill and, and grilling some steaks? Yeah, we sure are. I, I think, I think Texas Texans and Wyomingites are about the same under that aspect. They they love good good food and good grilling. Uh, yeah. So let me throw this at you before we get out of here. Are are you okay. looking the same as we are as making a law to be punishable by jail time? That if if we grill you a steak and you put ketchup on there, that's automatic thirty days in jail. Yeah, for sure. We've already kicked all those people out of the state of Wyoming to do that. So, like, they're not allowed to be in here no more. Yeah. So, a ketchup yeah. and a steak shouldn't even be within within six feet of each other. It should be social distancing for ketchup and steak for sure forever. <laughs> yeah, and if if you ever if you ever come back, you're getting a hot dog. That's right. We just don't invite <laughs> them back. You know, you don't put you don't put ketchup on a steak. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. We, we got we got to get that passed. We'll get that passed at some point, but. You know, you know, I, we appreciate you taking time to visit with us and, and tell us a little bit about what you do and, and about your music and things, man. And uh, we appreciate that, and uh, we will see you down the music road. Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me on, and we can't wait to get back to Texas. Our last show we played was in Houston with Pat Green. We can't wait to get back down there and see all the our friends that are Texans and see everybody. Yeah, come back to the warm country. Yeah, we will. I'll be back in about October, and we'll stay the whole winter. <laughs> that's that's a good time. All right, Chauncey, man, we appreciate it, and uh, we will we will catch you on the next one. All right, well, thanks. Thank you.